Okay, let's find the area of the shaded region. And the region I'm talking about here is what's highlighted in yellow. So what we have going on here is a uh, inscribed circle. You can see a circle right here, and it's uh, surrounded by a square. So anytime you hear this word inscribed in geometry, what that means is that it's actually um, the figure being inscribed is actually touching uh, what it's being inscribed in. So this case here, although my uh, little sketch here is not perfect, but basically this circle is touching the edges of this square. So the situation is we want to find the area of these uh, yellow parts right here or this uh, particular shaded region. And uh, this is a pretty standard type of problem that you're going to see in middle and high school mathematics. So I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to kind of set this up for you. I'm going to give you a chance to solve it on your own. Of course, if you could figure this out, I'm going to put your answers into the comment section. All we know right now is that we have a uh, inscribed circle inside of a square, and uh, one side of the square is three centimeters. So what I'm looking for is an approximation of the area of the shady region. Again, if you think you could do this, go ahead and put your answers into the comment section. But I'm gonna get to all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, if you're struggling in mathematics, there is hope. What you need is great math instruction. And what that is, is clear, understandable and comprehensive, okay? Not just a quick little tutorial, but really truly full-on instruction. That's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my Math Help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise you, you won't be sorry. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, there's a ton of exams out there like that. I have a um, full library of test prep courses that can help you out. If you happen to be a homeschooler, check out my middle and high school mathematics courses for homeschoolers. They've gotten great, uh, great reviews. By the way, if you need a pair of math notes, if you want something to study from, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to consider helping me out by liking and subscribing. And uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem now. So. Now let's go ahead and first of all just think about this in a logical way. So anytime you're tackling a problem like this, before you start doing any number crunching, what you want to do is think of a strategy like how are we going to find the area of this yellow region, okay? Well, basically what we need to do, okay, is if we had the entire area of this square, Okay, this is what we have, a square, three centimeter. Of course, if a square by definition is, if this side here is three uh, centimeters, this side right here will also be three centimeters. Hopefully you knew that. But if we can find the entire area of this square and then kind of cut out uh, the area of the circle. So in other words, uh, mathematically, when we cut out the area of the circle, we're gonna subtract this area right here. So if we can find the area of the circle, Okay, and of course the area of the square. So we have the entire area of the square. We have the entire area of the circle. But if we subtract this away, kind of cut it away from the area of this square, what's going to be remaining is this lovely little yellow shaded region right there. And that's what we're looking for. So this is the basic typical kind of setup for these um, type of problems. So anytime you're looking for, again, the area of a particular region, it's generally going to require you find an area of one thing and subtracting it from the other thing. So if you knew that, that's excellent. And uh, at this point, what you need to know how to do to solve this problem is find the area of a square and the area of a circle. Okay, so this is where it's going to get interesting. And um, what you're going to need is formulas, right? So let me ask you, what is the formula for the area of a square? Okay, well, I'll go ahead and give it to you just in case you forgot. But basically, the area of a square is side times side. Or you can think of it as the length times the width. It really is the same thing. So this 3 times this 3, of course, they're... Uh, we can't forget our units of measure, centimeter and centimeter. So there you go. I just gave you the formula to find the area of a square, but you probably forgot the area of a circle. Okay, well, no uh, worries. I'm going to go and give it to you now. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Okay, now remember 
this is an inscribed circle. So it's touching the edges of this square, which is kind of a big hint in terms of how to um, get the information you need to use this formula. So I want to give you the uh, formulas first to see if you know how to work with the formulas if you want to kind of try to do this on your own. If you're like, oh, okay, I understand what I'm doing, pause the video, do this real quick, and then see how well you've done. But let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so um, of course we already talked about the general strategy. We're going to need the area of the square and the area of this inscribed circle. So the area of a square is length times width or side times side. So here we have three and we have another three down over there. So it doesn't make a difference which side you choose. So the area is going to be three times three or nine centimeters squared. So anytime you're calculating area or volume, don't forget the units of measure. You will get um, uh, points deducted on any test or quiz. So uh, the units of measure for area is going to be um, units of measure squared, okay? Because you're multiplying. This is actually kind of do this real quick. You're multiplying uh, the units of measure by itself. So centimeter times centimeter is centimeter squared, okay? So don't forget to put that lovely little uh, unit of measure in there. You don't have to actually do it during all your calculations. As long as your final answer reflects that, that's what counts. Okay, so now let's talk about the area of this circle. Again, here is the formula, area equals pi r squared. So what does this mean? Well, r is the radius, okay? That's what that little r uh, means, but what is the radius? Well, here is the center of a circle, and we kind of draw this using this color. The entire width of a circle is something called the, and kind of kind of draw this out here, the diameter, okay? So the entire width of the circle is the diameter. So the width of the circle also happens to be the width of the square, if you will, which of course is three. But we don't need the diameter. What we need is the radius uh, to use this. So what is the radius? The radius is equal to one half of the diameter, okay? So the radius emanates from the center of the circle out to the edge. So in this case, uh, being that we know the diameter is three centimeters. All we need to do is take that diameter divided by two. We will have the radius. And of course, that will be 1.5 centimeters. Okay, 1.5 centimeters. And that's what we, uh, what we need in order to calculate the area of this circle. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it now. All right, so we know that the radius is 1.5 centimeters. Here is the formula. Again, area is equal to pi r squared. So r is the radius, that's gonna be 1.5. Okay, so the area is gonna be equal to pi times 1.5 squared. So I'll get to this pi here in a second. Now, this is where a lot of students mess up. They forget the order of operations. Okay, remember, in your PEMDAS, all right, uh, you have to do uh, what's inside parentheses first. So there's nothing to do here. There's just 1.5 inside those parentheses. But the next thing you have to do is E, which means power. Okay, you do that before multiplication and division. So make sure you do this part first. What, um, uh, a lot of students make a mistake. They'll take that pi and multiply by that 1.5, and then you'll get in all sorts of trouble. You don't want to do that. Okay, so 1.5 squared is 1.5 times 1.5, which of course is 2.25. Don't be afraid to use your calculator when doing these calculations. So the area is going to be equal to pi times 2.25. Now, let's talk about pi. Okay, now pi is something called an irrational number. In other words, the digits of pi, 3.14, pro everyone probably knows that uh, uh, pi is equivalent, rough or approximately equivalent to this, but this decimal goes on and on and on infinitely, okay? It doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. In other words, it just goes on. We don't really know the next digits. It just goes on and on and on and on and on off into infinity. So um, we never can get a full, uh, absolute, perfect decimal equivalent for pi. So therefore, when you use um, in, in uh, real life calculations, when we want an actual decimal value for area that involves pi, it's always going to be an approximation. Okay. Now you notice here, I'm using this equal sign. Technically, what I should be doing is using these little squigglies there. This is the um, what we call approximant and this is perfectly equal to. So I didn't do that here, I will, but I did want to uh, talk about that because most students will probably put in equal signs. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do a general approximation uh, for pi, which is 3.14. That's a real rough estimate, 
Uh, so just realize that at this point, you're finding an estimate of the area of the circle, not a perfect answer. If you wanted a perfect answer, this would be it. 2.25 pi is a way mathematically to express the exact area of the circle. But let's go ahead and just use this 3.14 decimal times this 2.25, which is the radius squared. So um, our approximation for pi times the radius squared will give us 7.065 centimeters squared. And let's go ahead and fix up that little symbol and we'll put in an approximation symbol, okay? So if you're not familiar with that little squiggly line like that, that's what it means. It's approximately 7.065. If we wanted a better estimate, we would use more digits of pi, okay? All right, so now we have the area of the circle we have the area of the square. So now we got to go back and review our strategy. Okay, so remember our strategy to find the area of this yellow region was to uh, first get the area of the square and then uh, subtract away the area of the circle. So here is the area of the square. Here is the area of that inscribed circle. So that will be nine or nine centimeters squared minus the 7.065 centimeters squared. And when you find that difference, you get 1.95 centimeters squared. Of course, again, these are approximations for the area of that region. But uh, if you got this right, if you understood all this, well, then I must give you a nice little lovely happy face in A++, a 110% and multiple stars to make you feel extra special because that's very, very good. Okay. Now, if you didn't understand uh, this particular problem, uh, this is a common type of problem. Again, you're going to see in middle and high school math, especially in all sorts of tests, standardized tests and tests that I've mentioned, like whether they're going to be taking um the SAT, ACT, GED, ASVAB. Um, by the way, when I talk about these tests here, um, probably everyone out there is going to be taking one of these tests I'm talking about, right? If you're going to go to vocational school, community college, regular college, military, uh, any sort of training thing, I'm telling you right now, you will be taking one of these tests, okay? There's a ton of them out there. You just don't realize... Um, that you're probably going to be taking one of these things if you have some sort of uh, goals that you're working on right now in terms of uh, education and or career. But um, anyways, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, if you need help with anything mathematics, check out my math uh, help program. I have a wide variety of uh, courses from uh, middle school math all the way up to very uh, um, uh, advanced mathematics that you will see at the college level. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.